Well, it is a big story. It's a global story. You had people coming from all over to work on this new plant, and everyone was excited about this new plant and about its potential. It is just a, a bigger part of the pie in agriculture than I think people would have ever imagined. Often people say, well, it's just a new crop, but it wasn't a new crop, it was a completely new culture. It was a different way of growing things, it was a different type of plant, it was a different type of cooperation between uh, agriculture scientists and farmers, and Agriculture Canada in Saskatoon was the epicenter for all of this research. So, and Dr. Keith Downey was the center of the epicenter. I am not the father of canola. Keith Downey and Balder Stephenson together as a team are regarded as the fathers of canola and they worked shoulder to shoulder for many years. Stephenson and, uh, and Downey together were able to do absolutely magnificent uh, selection experiments for the, the time and the equipment that they had in order to select for this higher quality oil and uh, a meal that was now palatable to animals. Well, that dramatically increased the value of this crop. We exchange material uh, all the time. Uh, we used each other's varieties as parents. Uh, Dr. Stephenson and I tried to have our varieties um, uh, be the ones that the farmer wanted, if you will. It was how fast can we get the best stuff on the market. Stephenson was a, a very intriguing, uh, curious scientist. Well, he challenged the, the, the traditional industry quite a bit, and he was really a let's get to it kind of a person. And in fact, the first canola variety tower was released by Balder Stephenson out of the University of Manitoba. You had all of the industry partners come together, the, the farmers, the scientists, the exporters. It was carried along by researchers who had a vision. It was great to have those uh, fertile minds uh, uh, poking at you uh, all the time, yeah. There is a, a collective will that's evolved over the last 40 years or so to keep building on this crop. It ended up being a big winner. It is now Canada's biggest cash crop where you had a few hundred acres in 1950 to an 18 or 19 billion dollar industry in 2015. We have actually turned around in a period of maybe 10 years of use of herbicide tolerant uh, uh, canola, the soil in Western Canada to be much more sustainable, much more productive, and actually much more versatile in, in the way we use our rotations. The, one of the really fascinating things is, is that it turned out to be an incredibly healthy oil. There's really no oil that's produced that's as healthy as canola. Well, every new variety of canola has more innovation in it, more oil, a better profile of oil for composition, higher yield, better resistance to diseases. This is the result of a lot of innovation and Canada should be proud of this and there are many more things to build on. And we want to emphasize end product development, uh, producing the vegetable oil here, producing protein food products here, uh, developing new uses for canola protein. In the case of agricultural biotechnology of crops, the main motivation of all the people who started in this was actually to reduce the use of pesticides. We have reduced now the use of insecticides around the world by roughly 10 million pounds of active ingredient per annum. I think if people heard that story, they'd go, well, that certainly co coincides with my value system. It's always said, when you go into a meeting about canola, you hang your hat at the door, everyone sets aside their egos for a bit, for that time, because this is canola. Since uh, the turn of the century, the private uh, companies have taken the lead in developing new varieties. What we need to see now is the, comp the, the role of the public labs in generating new ideas using genomic techniques, the latest in gene mapping. You cannot overemphasize the need to search for new knowledge, to employ brilliant creative scientists and students at that front end. I would like to see as much effort into the discovery side is absolutely possible because that is the well from which all the, the following new products will come. These days we have so much information that what we can do is actually describe the perfect plant. 
uh, for a particular environment, for a particular nutritional purpose. Let's develop the technologies that are required in the world in order to feed 9.6 billion people. And those technologies are moving so fast uh, that um, the best visionary is struggling to keep uh, ahead of the developments that are, that are coming through. I, I think canola has a tremendous future ahead and I'm hoping I'm still going to be around to see it uh, really blossom.